Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I just want to put this before you watch the video and because I know some persons will misunderstand me in this place, but you just have to understand that the world we are living in is the world that is filled with all kinds of possibilities. If you want to understand very well what this video entails, you have to watch the video I uploaded a few days ago, a few weeks ago, where a young man a certain young man, actually an old video, but many of us happen to be seeing it for the very first time, and told us how he offered his mother and sacrificed 11 of his uh, nephews and nieces, his, his aunties, his sister's children, in order to maintain power, in order to maintain his wealth, and he, in order not to die until he got to the point where it became his, his own turn to die. So this video is not by any means uh, a product of mine trying to cast a special on the video. I had expressed my pains over the death of that innocent child. You see, as I do this video as well, the pain, I could only imagine what that child went through. And I can only imagine the pain of the parents and most especially the mother. But having done that and having been sympathetic of them, now, this is the world of all kinds of possibilities. Already some prophets have come out and they have said what they said that they said, and some of them are still in this video. And the question here is, is the thought of this gentleman that I want to show you here true? And if it is true, how shameless will those prophets be? And if it is not true, hey, take it that this is just an information that is already there on the social media. And I am looking at it from all kinds of angles and also giving you a privilege to have access to it and also you know think in your mind and besides in case you're thinking of getting married either as a man or as a woman think deeply be sure you know who you are marrying to who are getting married to either you're a man or you're a woman as i bring to you this video but listen to what uh, pastor benny Hinn said in this video and because of the length of the video I'm going to make it in two parts. So be sure you watch the second part. For the second part, we'll explain everything that one of the guys in this video is actually trying to relate to us. Thank you very much, and God bless you. So um, I recently uploaded a video, you know, though it was late. Um, several days after the death of Ifani because of certain circumstances and the fact that I never actually wanted to get involved talking about the death of that child but uh, things uh, have seen you know since after the death of the child you know has made it necessary that I also contribute my quota and so after I, I finished shooting that video I saw the video of this young man who was said to be the one that Prophesied about the name is Prophet Samuel time. King, and this is a message to make more highlights on the prophecy that was given to David o on the 7th of January through my Facebook account. And uh, before I would like to continue, I'd like to send my condolence message to the family of David Adeleke, who just lost his son. I'm not here to show that I'm the best prophet on earth, which is one of the things I would like to be emphasizing. In my prophecy highlight when i gave this prophecy on the 7th of january i tried to do some move to make some move but of course i am not among the so-called names of the big men of god in nigeria who probably can speak to some celebrities and if i had spoken i would have been uh, called uh, one of the hungry prophets <coughs> looking for um uh, looking for fame or trying to look for money you know in our days now god is speaking but many people have underrated and underestimated the word of god so prophets are being abused because of a whole lot of things misconception about spirituality faith and the prophetic so i had to keep myself distance from trying to push because who would believe if i had said this was going to happen and if you read that prophecy very clear it said there are two clues one has already been fulfilled two has already been fulfilled the first is the death of David O's son. And the first clue, there were two clues said T and Y. The T stands for Thursday. And if you see all the happenings happen right now, 
it just happened after the birthday of David and it happened his son, which happened on Thursday the 20th. So that cannot be a coincidence. The last clue, which is why, is something I will not post, I'm not going to say online, out in this very confidence, would like to pass this message to David and his family. There is something he needs to know. I'm not out to get fame and I'm not meant to share this in public. I did three days fasting in obedience to instruct uh, the prophetic word that was given to me on the 7th of January. I received that word seven days before the 7th, which was on the 1st January night after the crossover night. And I was scared to post it because I needed confirmations and I had it like three times. Davido, I know this is a hard time right now for you and your wife to be Choma. I know that a lot of clouds and people are around you, but I'd like you to hold yourself very strong and try to be in a place of prayer because the enemy is not happy about a lot of things that is happening in your life. I'll send and I'll try my best to see how to reach out to the family and to give you the last clue and tell you how you should pray about this. 2023 is another big year, but let it not be a mirror reflection of what has happened today. May the soul of your son rest in perfect peace. Now you will go to meet him. He will not come to meet you. Shalom. You are welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. Okay, so um, you have heard him there, you saw him there. I intentionally allowed this to play and I'm, you know, because of this and other videos that I want to show you here because there is some kind of inconsistencies and some form of controversies now that seems to be coming up. Now, after him, I saw another man also who claimed that he also made these prophecies about the death of Ifani. Now, he said the video or whatever happened to be on his YouTube page. But Hello viewers, greetings to you. My name is Pastor Kennedy Ehimari. I'm here today because um, on Tuesday, November 1st, 2022, someone called me very early in the morning and brought my attention to a vision I saw about David Doe some months back for more information about that vision you can check my youtube page or check my facebook page you will see uh, where i saw a vision about david doe you know some months back and that and that is about a year now i think that was on tuesday 23 november 2021 all right so that is about a year now uh, but I have a message for David Doe and, uh, and Chioma. Uh, before I say that message, I want to first of all send my condolence to the family for losing their son, um, if I. All right. Um, and may the Lord uh, console that family at these trying times. Amen. Now, th this is a message I have for you, Davido, and, uh, and Choma. And now, I want to let you know that, uh, if I wasn't there, wasn't just their target. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? If I, your son, wasn't just their target. Alright. Davido and his woman was their target. Alright. And someone may say, well, Pastor, how did you know that? Well, well, go and check my, my previous vision some months back. Go and check my previous vision about the video. If you have actually uh, watched my previous vision about the video, uh, visiting a private home and all that, you know, you wouldn't even ask this question. You wouldn't even ask. How did you know that? You wouldn't even ask that question. All right, because that vision clarify everything. All right. Something was actually playing on in my mind. Don't get me wrong. I am not God and I'm not concluding anybody. But my question and my surprise, my what I do not understand is how come everybody is concentrating on Davido 
everybody is concentrating on the video now there are other people whose sons have died whose children have died whose calamities have you know befallen and we didn't so much see any of them you know talk about it and then when we have multiplicity of prophets according to the and the next video i will play to you now i'll play for you to listen when there were multiplicity of prophets who spoke about it and why is it that god did not hear the answer or answer the prayer of one of them at least because i want to believe that god was revealing these things in order for him to avert it in order for somebody to stand in the gap i still believe that sincerely god is still in the business of looking for those that will stand in the gap between him and these people so that he destroyed them not so if god could give it to this man give it to this other man give it to several other names that um emmanuel Ayod, Midili, prophet also you know spoke about that talked about the death of david's son how come none of them could pray so that god could have averted this I'm, I'm i'm just thinking why should it be the video and so just like you know as i was thinking and this man seemed that you know he took it out of my mouth to tell me the reason why god is so interested in the video and that reason is this so um uh, some people may say well why the video and so forth you not know, some holier than thou christians may want to so okay, what what does God have to say about David Do and all that? Why David Do and so forth? You see, God, uh, there, there are there are two ways to reach God. You see, prayer through prayer and through giving. And David Do is a giver. That's one thing I have to tell you. And not because I have benefited anything from him. Okay, he has not given anything to me before. We have never even met. I'm not even close to him, all right? That was why even when I saw that vision, there's no way for me to, to reach him, you know? So I had to make it public so that at least those who are close to him can allow him, all right? David Doe is a giver. He gives a lot. You see, what he has just said here, you know, is not, is not uncommon with preachers today. But I'm not trying to criticize him, but I, I think I know that the Bible says, that the sacrifice or the prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto the Lord. And if you think that he is the only one that is, you know, in this kind of understanding, now wait until you hear this man too. For this young man called Davido, he's a young man that I love with passion. Davido is a man, a young man that has the feeling of other people. I love him for who he is. I love this young man because of his character, his attitude. The darkness around you, around the video, is too much. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. But then there is a very huge dichotomy here. And it's the problem we have in church today. The church is ready and willing to collect money from sinners. Whereas the Bible's standard is seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So, when Cain offered unto God, God rejected the person of Cain, not the offering of Cain. God must, I mean, be pleasing to with you first. Your your person must be be pleasing to God first before God will collect anything from your hands. But today, these are this is a generation where people prioritize money over righteousness. Uh, looking at the comportment of the pastor, I'm not saying that he's fake, but he probably is speaking out of what he has heard from others. You know, which is the bane of what we are doing today. All right. So, yeah, prayer. But even the prayer of an unrighteous person is like a noise before God. God is a merciful God. Sometimes he can bypass his own law to save a sinner who cries out to him for help. Ahab was a terrible wicked man, but when he humbled himself, God pardoned. But that does not mean that Ahab repented. But that does not mean that God has changed his standard. The standard of God remains steadfast and very sure and certain. So, you are giving and you are living in sin. That is not God's way. That is not God's standard. You are giving and you are living in sin. You are praying and you are living in sin. You cannot get to God's heart. Isaiah 59 verse 1. Your sin has become the reason why it seems like the Lord doesn't hear prayers. 
And, and some months back, you know, before the, the 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 loss of his son, as we heard in the in the news, all right. Some months before then, I I saw David Doe in he in he gathered some youths in a room, and he was taking care of them. He was empowering them. He was giving to them. He was uh, training them. Training them, you know, different skills in different skills, and he did that secretly. I saw it in a vision, but I didn't want to uh, publish that. All right. So because he's a giver, that is why. Yes, you may say, well, he's not born again. Is this? Is that? Well, look at the Bible, for example. Uh, uh, take a look at Cornelius, for example. All right. Why was God interested in Cornelius and his family? Because, you know, you go, to, go read about Cornelius in the Bible. Well, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 1, I will read verse 1 and 2. You know the story. So I'm obeying the prophet's instruction. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, verse 2. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people, and they prayed to God always. The man was not just giving. He was not only giving. He was a man that feared God. The only difference was that he needed to have the right kind of knowledge about the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he was a devout man and he feared God. Now, MSB said he was a thoroughly good man. He had led everyone in his house to live worshipfully before God. He was always helping people in need and had the habit of prayer. So he was not just giving, he was not just praying, he was equally God-fearing. All right, so by no means now am I saying that these people have lied. I've not said that they have lied. I've not said they didn't see anything. But my question is, if there are these mighty men of God that could see the death of this child and it ends in their vision, it did not, it did not save the life of the child, then we should begin to ask questions. Now, because we have prophets today who can see doom, but they don't have solution as for what to do. Somebody will tell me, didn't they ask the, the video to come and see them? In order to balance it, we also have to look at this. Is it the will of God? Because sometimes... There are certain revelations that may come and God has determined that this is what will happen. And he gives an information to help the persons that will receive that shock to be readily available, you know, for it. As in, you know, developing some kind of shock absorber. We were told in the scriptures that when Simeon was dedicating, uh, you know, the Lord Jesus in the temple, he told the woman that, um, a sword, a knife, shall pierce through her heart. You know, that was an information that was given to her ahead of time. It, it was only left, you know, uh, to reason whether she understood that. Now, I know that sometimes God may, may allow certain things to happen. And out of his love and concern for, you know, people, he may, you know, give them information ahead of time. This is what is going to happen. You know, so, and if God has told you, He's not telling you because you can pray it out away. He's not telling you because, you know, he, he wants to make your heart bad, bitter. But he wants you to understand so that you don't miss it or misinterpret it. Now, is God the wicked God? No. But we understand that anybody in the will of God, whatever that happens to that person is, as according to the will of God, is always the best option for the person. Now, but then we must look at these persons, these prophets, they have not told any of us that God told them that, as in, it was going to be inevitable, all right? Now, but they were trying to make it look like Davido and Shoma or whoever that was concerned did not comply with the conditionalities that were attached to the things that, you know, the, the, the um, how do I put it now, uh, things that would make the prophecy not to happen. Now, so... The question here is because there is another video I will make. One of them here gave us a prophecy about Mazen Namdekano and he said Igbo people should pray. Namdekano is of the Igbo extraction. 
And the question is, did God show you this and ask you to tell only the evil people to pray? What have you done? Have you not prayed? Have you prayed? Or did God ask you not to pray for Nam Dekano? And you're asking the members, the people of his tribe to pray. So if they don't pray and anything happens, you know, you will come out and say, oh, I told them to pray and they didn't pray. And if nothing happened, yeah, he, he may come out and say, well, I told them to pray and they have prayed. And that is, now this is the confusion that sometimes I am mad at it because we never had this kind of confusion with the, the, the prophets of old and not to make mistake or to make you think, I do not think that there are prophets today. Any genuine child of God can hear the voice of God. Any genuine prophet of God, one, you know, operating in the prophetic, you don't even see them beat their chest. They are so humble about it. And they don't make noise. They don't, they don't put it out there in the air. I told you, you are despising the prophet of the land. Can you come, can you come? Oh, I just spoke to you over there. You know, all these things. Now, I won't actually dwell on that, but let's move on from here. Moving on from here, we see this person now saying that it wasn't even Ifanya that was the target. Even though he said that these other prophets have mentioned about it, but Ifanya was not the target. The target was Shoma. They didn't miss Shoma, and Ifanya became the victim. Hear him. God bless you, viewers watching all over the world. My name is Prophet Elijah Bamidele Yulukolo. By the grace of God, I am the spiritual son of late prophet tb joshua everybody knows me you know that i'll be one of these prophets in nigeria who have been speaking the mind of god concerning our nation and the happening around the country i firstly want to sympathize with the, the family of david adeleke of the loss of their son may the lord receive that little boy to his bosom in jesus name why i i want to speak about this issue i'm not good in talking about it, things like this but i want what draw my attention was because of the issue, the things happening in Nigeria, mostly in Nigeria, where people no longer believe men of God. People not talk down men of God. Everybody can just come on social media, begin to insult pastors. You know, no pastor is genuine. No pastor is real again. You know, that is this is one of the problems that is happening now in our nation. I'm not saying there are not fake pastors. There are fake people. Also, there are still original people. The Bible says, "Test all spirits to know if they are from God." This, this, if this family of a uh, 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 the video, if they have listened to the voice of God, this boy would have died. This boy would have died in a nation where the voice of God is not recognized. That nation will collapse. That nation will collapse. God spoke, God revealed this revelation to people. They, they spoke out. A lot of you came out and said they are looking for attention, they are poor people, they are looking for recognition, they are looking for money. Prophet Samuel, I think Prophet Samuel, or oh, Emmanuel, I don't know, gave the revelation. Prophet Godwin Koro gave the revelation. Prophet Onu, a maker from Aoji, also saw it and saw the video to come and see him. No, we look that men of God and believe that men of God are not recognized, they are not important. This is the problem we are having today. Where are God still speak? Let us come back to God and listen to the voice of God. This is what drew my attention to this, to, to this matter and I decided to go into prayers to ask God what really happened. And I discovered in the realm of the spirit that this young boy was not really the target. The target was the mother, which is trauma. The arrow was fired to the mother. God diverted the arrow. Because if that arrow had hit this woman, it would have been a different story now. The video would have been accused for a different reason. For what you did not know, they would have accused him. And as I was praying and asking God about this young man, I saw what I saw baffles me. The Lord said to me that I should tell David Do to look for God. Look for God now. I saw darkness everywhere around you. Send this video, send this video to David Do. I saw the darkness I saw is too much. There is another calamity the enemy has prepared down for this young man called David Do. He's a young man that I love with passion. David Do is a man, a young man that has the feeling of other people. I love him for who he is. I love this young man because of his character, his attitude. But the darkness around you, around the video, is too much. The Lord said, the earlier this boy look for him, the better. Look for God now, so that you will not pray later. Because I've seen the family of the video praying later. They are going to pray later. The Lord said they should pray now. Look for God now. This is how we speak. They don't listen to us. So the question now is, this God that have been speaking different languages. Which one is the original God? 
you see, I find it very disheartening and very, very uncomfortable. If you watched that video I uploaded earlier, I said there that it is not fair for people to just trend. Now, th this is what this is where these people have brought us to. This is where the church has been brought to. The church has been so ridiculed by men that are. See, I won't say that they are hungry. They are not hungry. I'm not saying they are hungry because they have not stood the, the video to give them food. All right. I me, mean, I have not heard that. But then, my question is, as powerful as all of them are, none of them could have convinced God. When God told Moses that he was going to destroy Israel, Moses did not go to tell the children of Israel. Moses settled it there with the Lord. So why was it that none of them... Now, or is it that people are giving prophecy and, and they sit on it so that it will come to pass in order for others to know and then does them that, oh, he spoke about it and it came to pass now if it was something that they prophesied and they made it open and eventually like election if they prophesied that somebody would win election and that person didn't win it now they'll come to tell us that the opposition prayed the opposition did this the opposition did that now if it was because of davido's philanthropy that made him so special in the eyes of god See, there's no doubt about that, that God can have special interest, even in the worst person, the worst sinner. God can still save the worst sinner, waiting for him, giving him time enough. So, that is, this is not what I am saying, but if that giving was so special, that that was why God began to reveal him to all this incident, to all of these prophets. So, why is it that God did not look at that giving? And whatever they, we know, they probably wanted him to do that he did not do. And God would, you know, look at it and avert it. Or is it that they received the prophecy and none of them prayed? And they were waiting for Davido to come. Because me, I know that Davido will not come. And all of you know that Davido will not come. He will not come. So if God knew, when God knew that Davido will not come and gave you the prophecy, is there not something that God asked you to do that you could have done out of love for the small boy or for Shema? Now, because this other one said when when he saw the prophecy, he now went into prayer. He went into prayer and God told him that it was not even a fire, but it would have been Shema. Now, looking at this and looking away from this, he made mention of people talking about Davido in bad light. What people would have said about Davido, that Davido sacrificed Shema. Now, that seemed not to have gone away. All right, let's listen to Joseph Okeshu briefly. I want to say that my heart was torn when I heard the news of Ifani Chupu's passing, Davido's son. It was, you know, I'm trying to be as honest and as real as I can be. I don't want to pretend. I'm being very honest with you. And I believe I'm not alone when I say that I felt like the child that was lost was my biological child. The boy was too precious. The boy was a star in the making, bigger star than his dad. And the devil came and took him. So as soon as this happened, too many people started writing me because they already know how much I know about stuff that go on in the entertainment industry both in Africa and Hollywood, wherever. I do have some knowledge. And everybody was writing, Joe, what do you think? Do you think it was a sacrifice? Do you think David sacrificed his child and stuff like that? So, I'm making this video not because I have done any proper research into this situation, because usually I will just take my time and research stuff and then I will speak with a tone of finality but that's not the case here but what i'm going to do is help you understand what i believe may have happened to ifani and then i can compare it to the ones that has happened or that have happened to so many other stars in hollywood and other places and see whether they bear some semblance if you ask me ifani was a sacrifice pure sacrifice 
Because if you look at the story surrounding the death of Ifani, it bears all the hallmarks, it bears all the trappings of a typical ritual sacrifice situation. From everything I've researched in my life about ritual sacrifices for fame in Hollywood and in the entertainment industry. How can you have all those people in David's house and this my precious boy just snuck out and none of them, not the nanny, not all the other people, caregivers and every other person in the house, nobody saw him in that big house and he just took off and went straight to the pool. Nobody, no neighbor, no bystander, nobody around anywhere saw this boy and the guy had already died underneath the water in the pool and it took another 20 plus minutes to locate. Are you kidding me? What kind of story is this? This was a sacrifice. Personal opinion. They sacrificed him on the Halloween day. When they sacrificed Whitney Houston, it was during the Grammy. They always find all those little things, little moments and times and seasons because we don't know about numerology. So they know about numbers. They put numbers together and they know when to sacrifice. So when Diana died, they also had to deal with numbers. You don't know all these things, but that's what makes me believe strongly that if I in Chukwu was sacrificed, I have not really dug deep into all the things I need to dig into. And that's why I'm just giving you personal opinion, what I believe. And in the future, if I have the time to dig into it, I will be sure to let you know what I found out. Now, when Joe was talking and he was talking. All right, just like I explained in the beginning of the video, uh, click the next button so that you will watch the next video, the part two. One and two, I made them together, so I uploaded them at the same time. Get ready to um, unravel what Okishuku was about to say in that part one. God bless you.